Uh, I got a chance to look at a few of you and your work, and it looks pretty good, but let's go over it together. All right, we've got uh, this, what? This rectangle. The rectangle, and I asked you to find two equations, what's the area, what's the perimeter. Um, so let's start off just nice and slow here. How long is this side? X. Also x, and how long is this side? Seven. Great. So let's talk, let, let's go all the way back to the beginning of the year. What is area? Yeah. The space inside of the shape. Okay, a little more specific. Else? How many squares can go inside of the shape? You guys remember that? Yeah. How many squares can fit? We use squares to measure area. We could use anything we wanted to measure area, but squares are just really efficient. Okay, so we use squares. So, you know, this side is saying uh, that it's seven in length. Which means I can put seven little tick marks there, and it's seven feet or seven inches or whatever. Uh, this one's saying that it's x inches or feet or whatever, and um, well, it's a little more vague, okay? But uh, just for a quick reminder, if this side were seven, let's see, that'd be one, two, uh, that's, uh, that's about seven equally spaced tick marks, and this one's three. No, that's not Right? Let's pretend what I'm about to draw is a square, okay? Because these measurements are supposed to be the same, inches, feet, whatever. So one square can fit there, and so naturally, how would I calculate how many squares can fit in the entire rectangle? Three times seven. Three times seven, right? I got, I got a row of seven down here, and since this is three high, I could stack three rows of seven squares, which is uh, as basic as explaining what multiplication is basic as it can get, okay? So this is seven and this is x, so how do we calculate the area of this rectangle? Sean? Seven x. Seven x, seven times x. The area is seven times x. Okay, how about the perimeter? How do we calculate the perimeter? Anybody besides Sean? Sean can't carry you today, or well, Alex already answered as well. Come on. Saw a lot of good work out there. Don't be shy. All right. Two x plus fourteen. Okay, so perimeter two x plus fourteen. Because what now? There's two x's because because if we were to do the perimeter, I would mean like uh, walking around this rectangle and measuring how far we walked all the way around, and we would walk along an x side and a seven side and another x and then another seven. So in all, we would walk past two x's and two sevens. So two x plus 14. Okay? Yep. Any questions? Two x plus 14 and seven x. If there's any questions, now's the time, because I'm about to give you something that's pretty uh, contingent on you understanding these two things. Anything, any questions? Okay. And here's what I have for you today. I'm going to pass out this activity for each of you. I want you to start on it individually. I may have you uh, consult with each other here in a bit. Um, yeah. So what you have on the front side is a bunch of shapes. Okay. I'm going to start with shapes A through D because beyond D they get a little bit tricky. Not that tricky. Okay. But let's start with A through D and see how we do. Uh, the thing here is that the perimeter and the area, okay, now this is the thing that I, I don't want you to get tricked by, the numbers are equal to each other. Now, perimeter and area are different things. What do I mean by that? Perimeter and area, they measure different things. What do I mean by that? Sean? Different Consumption of space with what? Squares. Okay. One measures distance, which is a linear measure, which means we measure it in a line. Okay. And area is a measure of squares, which is completely different from a distance. Right. I might measure miles, and that's a straight distance. But square miles is a completely different thing. It's how much space something takes up, how many squares something takes up. Okay. So 
the two things are not equal to each other. It's impossible for a perimeter to be equal to an area, but what we're saying here is that the number value equals, they equal each other, okay? So like some, some rectangle might have a perimeter of 27, it also happens to have a perimeter of 27, okay? There are some measurements that would make that work out, all right? So that's the catch here. What I want you to do is, all the work here for each uh, figure I want you to do in each of these boxes that are already labeled for you. So a, uh, figure A, figure B, figure C, figure D, I want you to do all your work in there so it's all organized and I can spot it easily. Okay? Feel free to work on here and, and do things that I want your equations, which are very, very necessary in your work to be done in these boxes. Okay? So I want you to write an equation, I want you to solve that equation, and this will go into more detail as well. Okay? Is there a question? Oh, yeah. Can can we do all the work on the back? Yeah, if you yeah, that'd be fine. Just make sure that all your work for A is there, B is there, they're completely different from each other, not related to each other. Okay. Except that they all have this thing where the area number is equal to the perimeter number. Okay. Can we pass these all out? soapbox about learning algebra, okay? And it basically boils down to, to learn algebra, you have to practice and learn algebra, all right? Guessing and checking is not algebra, all right? I know it's hard to get away from that, but guessing and checking, throw it away, okay? It's a good way to start, but we are well beyond where we would start with guessing and checking, okay? So rather than, let's say that this was one of the the figures from the, the worksheet, which I don't think that it is, I just kind of made it up. Okay. Uh, the area would be equal to 7x and the perimeter would be equal to x plus 14. I could just throw x's here and here. And that's exactly what we're looking for, x that goes here and it goes here, right? But that's not algebra, right? Algebra is just a little bit harder, but also if we just keep doing what's easy, we'll never progress, okay? So let's say that this was a figure from your worksheet. How could I say with these equations what I've been saying the, like, to you and that, say that, that are written in the directions there? That the area is equal to the perimeter. Alex? 7x equals 2x plus 14. Okay. Do you see what that's saying? That equation is saying the area, which is equal to 7x, is equal to the perimeter, because the perimeter can be found by 2x plus 14. This is saying the area equals the perimeter. Now what's left to do? Simplify the equation. Simplify, uh, well, let's just say like generally the thing that's left oh. is to solve it. Solve it, solve for x. Find what x is. When I find what x is, is then I'll know what x is. Right? I can use x to find the actual perimeter and the actual area. Alex? What I, don't, you do? I don't want you to give away too much here. Right? I want everybody to think about how they might solve the <laughs> equation, particularly with these variables on both sides. So I don't want you to give away too much. You're not um, going to give it away? I don't think so. Okay, go ahead. Well, like, can't you do that for all of them? Well, yeah. yeah. Once I know an equation for the area and the equation for the perimeter, if the area and the perimeter are the same, which we've said that they are, again, not the units, just the numbers are equal to each other. We can do that for every single one, right? The thing that gets more difficult is the equation itself that comes out of this. Maybe it's hard to solve. Maybe one of the answers is a decimal. Maybe the equation itself is a little bit trickier to write, as in the case of the last three. Okay. So no guessing and checking. Let's put that to bed. All right. Everybody remember what this is? Okay. So in the first figure, we wind up with area is equal to what? 3x. 3x. And uh, perimeter is equal to what? 2x plus 6. 2x plus 6. Everybody agreed on that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, so we get the equation 3x equals 2x plus 6 because we said that the value of the area, the value of the perimeter, just the numbers, not the units, are equal to each other. All right. So let me represent that on this scale. Okay. On this side, we'll have 3x, and on this side, we'll have 2x plus 6. 
the thing that the little catch about this is that there's variables on both sides of the equation. That's like the new tricky thing. Okay, but it's not too tricky. Think about it for a bit. Okay, remember the scale over here? Yeah. Right. The thing that represents x is a little canister that uh, might be holding what well, we don't know how much. Okay. Uh, on this side. Well, the next side we clearly have three x's, x plus x plus x, three of them. And on this side we have two of them, and then six units, like six ones, right? There's some ones in, in all these x's, and in all these x's, the exact same number of ones. We just don't know how many that is. Okay? So the way we use a scale and the way we use an equation is the same exact thing, the same exact way. We want to get it so that on one side there's a 1x, and on the other side there's just a bunch of 1s, and then we can check with this 1x is equal to this many 1s. Easy as that. Okay. And we do that by taking away or adding to an exactly the same amount from both sides. Grady, look like you had an idea of how to do that. Minus 2x equals 7. So you see from the scale, if I were to take these two x's off of the scale, Right? Now they're gone. Okay. Well, now if I if I only did that, then what would happen to the scale? What would happen to this side of the scale? It go up. Go up. Right. It'd be lighter now because I took stuff off. So I come over here. I need to balance that out. So I do what? Minus two x. So take two x away from this side as well. Right. I take them off of this side. Okay. Would that make it balance on both sides? Mm -hmm. No. Yes. I took two x's from here and two x's from here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I took the same amount from both sides. Now the scale still flat, both sides equal, still balanced. Can you tell me by looking at this how many ones are inside this x canister? Yeah. How many? Six. Six. Because there's six over there. And so this, since it's balanced, must be six. Okay? In an equation, it looks very similar. Okay? We'll take two x from this side and two x from this side. See what happens there is like, I don't have any x's. I only have x's on one side now. Right? When I take all the x's from one side and take the same amount from the other side, now I don't have any x's. Well, I only have x's on one side. I don't have any x's on the other side. And what's three x minus two x? One. One x, just like this picture shows. x equal to two x minus two x is zero. So all this left is six. x is six. Okay. That is how it is. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. Well, let's take all the x's off of one side and take the same amount off of the other side. And hopefully when we do that, what I would suggest is the side that has numbers on it, if there is only one side with numbers on it, like just take the x's from that side, take the same amount from the other side, and you'll just be left with a number on this side and some x's on this side. Maybe you'll have to divide at that point as well. Okay? Does that make sense? Thumbs up? Thumbs up or thumbs uh, sideways or thumbs down? Thumbs okay, looks like thumbs up. So keep it going.